Did you know that a study shows that fat people get paid between $9,000 and $20,000 less per year than their straight size counterparts? In another study, 42% of HR professionals disqualified fat candidates for the role just because of their size. Is this really surprising to a lot of people? If you're not physically capable of doing a job, I don't know why you expect to be hired or paid the same amount compared to somebody that's doing the job adequately. And oftentimes, when I hear these bullshit ass studies, of going, well, guess what? These particular people are not paid to the same degree that these other people. I think we need to look a little bit deeper into a lot of these like numbers, dude, because oftentimes they don't calculate the numbers based off of like actual hours worked, right? Like, hear me out for a second. Is it an oddity if somebody's gonna make more money if they worked double or triple the amount of time that the other person worked? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we should be looking at that instead of just looking at people that make money across the entire spectrum of obesity and not obesity. It just makes sense that people that cannot physically work as long as another person that can physically work is not going to get paid the same amount. I don't know why this is even like a, like this is not something I feel like that should even be expelled out of the mouth. Honestly, these numbers that you, you, you're, you're telling us right now are meaningless. Can we just be honest for a second? When you're big as fuck, when you're ginormous and you're massive, you're not going to be able to perform to the same degree that a person is that that when they're not that size. Could we just like if you were you ever see like the Maury Povich show? I know that was like really popular in the early 2000s, right? You remember like it's like a meme of the girl that goes like you are not the father. And she has to run out of the show or whatever and the guy has to chase her around with the camera. Do you really do you do you think a 500 pound man is going to be able to perform that role to the same degree that the, the I don't know, the Olympic athletes they have running on the show already? No, obviously not, dude. You're going to need a guy that's in shape, that's going to be able to run appropriately. What is this guy going to do as he's, like, recording? He's going to be chowing down on, like, Rice Krispie treats? No, dude. You need a guy. You need somebody that's going to be able to perform adequately, aerobically, in order to catch the, you know, the single mothers or whoever they are. You know, the crying mothers or whatever, man. The point I'm making is it's not feasible to have people that are out of shape doing jobs that require you to be in shape. And obviously, you're going to have to... Pay the price for that. I don't know what else to tell you. Percent of HR professionals disqualified fat candidates for the role just because of their size. If making the workplace size inclusive is important for you, then it's not. It's it's like I don't know why so many people feel like we need to make everything so incredibly inc inclusive. Are you going to make jobs inclusive for things that like, for instance, if you need to perform, if you need to be like a construction worker, you need to work long hours and you need to let, let's say, for instance, you're one of those guys that puts the shingles on the roof. You know what I'm talking about? Are you going to hire a guy that's like 400 pounds, you know, he's got gut stains on his stomach, he's wearing a wife beater, right, he's got mutton chops, he comes in, and every time he says something, you hear, you hear him go, yep, yep, do that, yeah, are you going to hire that guy? Nope, nope, not hiring him, he's too big, he's going to crumble the roof, I need men that are big and strong, not just big, and he's way too big, if you're taking up double or triple the amount of human that one normal person is going to, I don't want to hire you, you're not, you're not adequate for this position, I don't don't know why this is such a, a crazy statement to say i might be an asshole here in saying this but if you're not if you're not physically capable of performing the job is it is it really like am i the asshole for saying that are you going to be physically inclusive for like all jobs across the board because you do realize that's like totally infeasible right you understand that's never gonna work ever like this is why i think it's great to have equal opportunity in the sense of like everybody should have the ability to work in jobs like if you want to and you can do it then you can do it right if you want to be a badass woman boss Marine, if you can meet the physical requirements in order to be a Marine, that's great. If you want to be a hairstylist as a man, that's great. If you can do it, you can do it. I disagree tremendously with equal outcomes because it's never going to work. How the fuck are you going to equalize across the entire spectrum? You don't think things are going to be slacking off if you need to incorporate, I don't know, fat ladies inside of like construction jobs. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. What are you doing? Why are you even here? You know what I'm talking about? Like you're, I just think it's so it's, it, I understand it's a great idea in the sense of like, I think there should be more inclusive work environments, but it literally ignores human choice. Like if you don't want to do something, I don't think that a person should be forced to be put in a role that is that they, they're going to suck in. They're just going to suck. It's just what it is. You're not you're not good in this role. But guess what? Guess what? Hold on. Hear me out for a second. Just because you're not good at laying down shingles on a wall or a ceiling or whatever the fuck those things are, roofs, that doesn't mean you're not good at doing other things. You could be very good 
at like washing windows or like playing video games or wearing hats. I don't know. There's a plenty of things that you're really good at, but I think it's like very, very ignorant to just assume that we're going to have to have fat people in particular roles because we don't have enough fat people in these roles. That's dumb. That doesn't make any sense. And by the way, if people aren't working to the same degree as another person might be in that same job position, you can't blame anyone else but that other person. It's not like, oh, it's just dumb. It's just like, how are you going to blame the person making more money when they're working more hours? I don't get it. Grab this free resource. Resource. It's called How to Make Your Workplace Size Inclusive. And in there, you're going to get actionable steps to take to make the workplace better for those in bigger bodies. But like... If it if your goal is to make the workplace better for bigger bodies, which is a nice statement actually, better for bigger bodies, BBB, you already know, big beluga whale bitches. It's a crazy statement to say that because like, again, you're ignoring all the other people. You, I, I think if you're going to make it more inclusive, I don't even know how you would do that. I guess like add fewer steps, more ramps, more elevators. I don't fucking know. You, the, the temperature would have to be lowered quite a bit because when you're fatter, you don't, you have more thermal dynamics. So you can most definitely just walk around like a, a portable space heater. So you have that. Well, I don't know about portable, but you can most definitely make it more inclusive, but how, how much more inclusive can we make it without having it be a detriment? You know what I'm talking about? I worked with women that had acrylics on and they never did shit. And I'm not saying that because I'm not saying it's a passive ability that all women that have acrylics can't work. But the amount of times that I've worked with these girls and they, they would be like, I can't, sorry, I can't lift this because my acrylics can't do it. And I'd be like, dude, why did you even get you're like, you're literally, you did this on purpose. You know, like you literally put these, I feel like when you were getting these done at that Vietnamese hair salon or wherever you got this done, you were literally thinking about, I'm not doing shit tomorrow, dude. Fuck that. These acrylics are staying on for three weeks. They cost me $80 and they're staying on trust on that and i've worked with really really fat guys these dudes did nothing absolutely fucking nothing better yet they were actually breaking shit that the amount of times i've worked with fat guys and they would break like furniture or whatever because they would just sit on things that they probably weren't supposed to and they were sitting on that stuff because they were tremendously out of shape so they had to sit down you know what i'm talking about it was, it was an obvious thing for this guy to have to sit down he just walked 10 steps he's gonna need a break so i would work with these people that were incredibly inefficient i'm not saying that i was incredibly efficient i most definitely was a slacker the amount of times that they would go, David, can you can you go back here and can you put this stuff back? And I would go, yup. And I would just go back there and I would literally just Kobe shit in the random sections of the store because I didn't know where any of the stuff was supposed to go. I would just literally go to the kayak section. Oh, look at this. Uh, what is this, like a dog toy? Whatever, dude, just Kobe it, dude. Oh, what what is this, assorted biscuits? Kobe, I don't care. What is it? I don't fucking know. I bet to this day, if you go to that store because they had no cameras in that section, I made sure they didn't. I... If you went to that section, you would find jars of relish. You would find slippers, tooth, toothpaste. It'd be a whole bunch of stuff in there. Random. It probably expired by now. But the point I'm making is don't look at me as a bad person for that, by the way. It was, it was a shit job. They weren't even paying me minimum wage, to be honest. But anyway, so the point I'm making is sometimes certain people are just not – it's just not right for that position. And that's okay to say right? If you, are you going to hire somebody that doesn't know how to do math as a cashier? I know everything's like automated nowadays, but you still need some level of math expertise. Are you going to hire the guy that doesn't know how to do math or read or write as a guy that's going to be cashier or something like that? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you're going to call him up. Hey, Jeremy, I know that you can't, I, Jeremy, I know that you can't really like do work or like you can't actually do math at all, but I'm going to need you to be on the register today, even though you have like no experience and you don't know how to do any of that stuff. Can you just go ahead and go on that register? Even though I know you're going to like literally give everybody fucked up change and you're probably not even going to like, this is dumb. It's dumb. It's dumb. So get the fuck off me, dude. Okay. It's, I get it. You want things to be more inclusive, but I feel like this is going a little bit too far. You're going to get actionable steps to take to make the workplace. That's the only steps they're taking. Can we be honest for a second, dude? Better for those in bigger bodies. Hey, I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I do training for organizations who want to add size inclusion. I want to know, like, because I know that some establishments, some work establishments literally hire certain people, like, uh, like these people, for instance, like bigger body advocates or whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Like hiring bigger body advocates or like, um, people that specialize in racial ambiguity or whatever the fuck, like to help out racial programs in the workplace or whatever the fuck. I know oftentimes they just hire these people just to reach a quota, like, so they can say that they did hire these people. I really wonder what they do. Like, if you go into a work establishment, right, and you notice that fat people, like, what if you went into the work establishment and you notice that fat people weren't doing any work? Would you then go, this is it? This is what, this is what we need. Oh, thank God. This is it. 
This is what we've been working for. This is it, okay? You guys are doing it right. I don't even know why I'm here. These fat people are just laying on the floor. Oh, they can't get up? Perfect. Perfect. Leave them there. That's their that's their natural habitat. Just throw Rice Krispie Treats at them for the next six hours. And, oh, they stay there for the rest of the night? Perfect. Beautiful. Keep them there. Keep them there. That's perfect. They're doing what's right. Is that what you do? Is that what you do? Into their diversity efforts. So you're going to go to weightbiastraining.com. Education. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Efforts. So you're going to go to Can I read that? Education to empower folks to provide fat positive experience to their clients, service, service users, and the workplace. Okay. Weight inclusive counseling support supports organizations in their efforts to reduce the harm of anti-fat bias in their practices. Bro, what are you talking about? What the fuck are we doing nowadays? How did we how are we failing so hard that we have too many fat people and now it's becoming an issue? We have so many fat people now. We need advocates so they can I don't get paid more money for doing less work. I I just don't get it. I don't get it, bro. We had so we we were fighting for women's rights. We were fighting for black people to vote. We were fighting for all this great stuff to have food, you know, have the ability to take your kids to school. And now we're fighting for fat people to get paid more because they're doing less work. Where do we go wrong? <laughs> we're failing too hard. No, we're succeeding too hard in the wrong direction. No, I just don't get it. Like the pendulum has swung way too far. It swung so far that it's like crashed outside the wall. It's like in Egypt right now. Scroll down, click that button, and just tell me where you want the guy to go, and it'll be yours. And remember, if your organization's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts don't It's just that shit makes me that shit makes me sick, dude. Oh my god, so many buzzwords, dude. And, oh, is this 2016 again, dude? What the fuck is going on? It, it, inclusivity efforts, dude, including size liberation? What are you doing with your life where you even have to say these words? Like, I really genuinely feel like if I said all those words in that same sentence, I would become brain damaged. Like, I feel like I would have to be like, rushed to the hospital, like a brain aneurysm or something like that, because there's no way those words could be expelled. Out. And by the way, what, what are you, like, you're dressing like you're John Travolta that's fused with Hillary Clinton, and you have this very, I don't, like, it's, Hmm. People dress very weird nowadays, man. I don't know. Includes size liberation. Nice teeth, though. missing a significant part of your employee population. So let's fix that. At the end of every single year, I dread January. Because in January, we're flooded with toxic diet culture. Talks of diets and workouts and miracle medications and surgery. It's gross. <laughs> You can sit in here going like, I hate that people are bettering themselves. Just keep it a buck. That's really what it is, right? You don't like seeing people succeed. And because of that, because you're stuck in this, this pattern of constant depression and you don't want to see people be happy, which is just say that, just say it, just rep, just rep it, dude. Come on. Just be real with us. That's what you want to say. You don't like it when it's January and people go, I'm going to do something about myself. I'm going to get rid of this gut. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to become a muscle mommy. I'm going to become a muscle daddy. I'm going to become super lubricated. I'm going to lubricate, marinate my mouth in water and good, nutritious foods. And you see that and you go, I'm not doing any of that stuff. That makes me feel bad. I'm not going to. No, I hate it. It's gross. I'm going to block people that want to better themselves because I don't want to do that. That's what I'm hearing from you. That's what I'm hearing. And you're doing it while you're doing your makeup, which is crazy because isn't that a physical thing that you're coating your face with right now? <sighs> I don't understand how these people can care. So like people have different priorities, obviously. And I feel like sometimes priorities are a little bit weird, right? Sometimes they're a little bit weird. Like I bet guys that will fully, fully, fully eat a woman's ass. No problem at all. I've even met some guys that told me that it was foul. Like they've eaten a woman's butt cheeks after she got out of the gym and they said it was gross and they loved it. Some guys are fucking nasty, right, dude? That's a, I know some women that do that too, right? I knew a girl that was like, you just got out the gym, whip it out, whip it out right now. I need that. I need all of it. I need the congestion. I need the Gouda. I need the, the provolone. Give it to me right now. Give me that hot marinara sausage or whatever she said. I don't know. But I'll talk to these dudes and they will, to the ends of the earth, they will never, ever, ever drink breast milk, which is incredible. You want bring it, you're not drinking breast milk, but you're fully capable of eating a woman's salty butt cheeks. Ah, where's the priorities? How'd you get there? How'd you get there? You know, and the same thing here. How can you be somebody going, I hate diet culture. I hate losing weight. Weight is just, you know, losing weight is disgusting. Anyway, let me just coat my face in this lovely makeup to make myself real pretty. Okay, yeah, all right, priorities. 
anything to be skinny. Anything to be skinny. It's not anything to be skinny. People that are going to the gym are doing something to help themselves. Not anything, okay? I don't even know why you would say anything as if it's like a bad thing. You're inferring the context, how people are going to read that. The words that, that you're saying are going to the gym is extreme, which is not extreme. Uh, going to the gym to try to practice good healthcare is not extreme at all. That's pretty normal, in my opinion. Like, people do it all the time, dude. Gym culture is a thing. Nothing other than that. There's been a lot of discourse in the plus size community. It's been disheartening to say the least. It's one thing to want to lose the weight because this is not to say that these fat people owe it to the community to stay fat, but it doesn't have to be done by spewing fat phobia. And in my opinion, shouldn't be done by creating additional demand for a drug that's already in short supply. Ozempic, right? Yeah, they hate Ozempic, dude. They just, just they dislike it so heavily, dude. Cause it's like, now it's like being prescribed or whatever, people love it, man. And uh, my opinion on it is if you need it, you need it. That's just what it is. These people though, they dislike it heavily because they see the demonization of the fat community. Like obviously if you're losing weight, meaning like you were once fat and you're coming out of the realm of being fat, you're gonna obviously realize, wait a fucking minute, I was fat for so long and now I'm no longer fat. I'm feeling good. I feel so, oh my God, look at my, look at my curves. Oof, oh. Look at that curve. Look at the way my butt cheeks are shaped now. I look good. And you do look good. You look very good. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. But here's the thing. You're going to see that you felt terrible and your life was suck dick. And you're going to uh, probably demonize the other side now. You're going to go, mm, I don't like that anymore. That was obviously not good because I have hindsight and I'm looking at it and through 2020 vision. And I'm realizing that being fat, not so good. And you're going to tell people that and they dislike it because they're a part of that community and they don't want to change, which is fine if you don't want to change. But you can't be mad when people do want to change and they realize what the problems were. According to the manufacturers, these shortages are expected to continue all the way to August 2024. As a type 2 diabetic, I haven't even been able to get my medication consistently for the last year. You can probably imagine my overall frustration when I see these influencers out here pushing it for a check. Just my two cents. Okay. <laughs> Healthism refers to a set of attitudes and beliefs that health is the most important pursuit in life and that it is the personal responsibility of the individual and solely within that person's control. For the most part it is. I mean, I know that there are things about you that you cannot change. Like if you are dis if you have a disability or maybe you have some kind of genetic issue that's going to prohibit you from pursuing total health, which is not really achievable for almost everybody. Like nobody's going to be perfect health, but you can always pursue healthier behaviors to make yourself overall healthier. And that's good, that's really good. You don't want to be one of those people that goes, ah, there's nothing I can do about myself. I'm already like, it is what it is. I'm, I'm contempt. That's terrible. You can always improve, even if you don't want to go to the gym or you don't want to lose weight or whatever the fuck it's always something that you could do something that can make you feel better something's going to make you look better something's going to make your environment better whatever the fuck it's just going to be better for you i don't like being around people that oh, just are depressing dude it's so it's gross it's really gross to hear somebody continuously complain 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 and then there's like no outcome you know i I'm really a solver type of person. I love listening. I'm a listener. Obviously, I'm going to listen to people. And I've learned this skill over a period of time dating women because women will complain and they'll just say things. And I'm just like, oh, okay, let me like, I know how to fix that, by the way. And I'll know how to fix that. And that's not the point. That's not the point most of the time when, and this is not all women, but most women that I've talked to have done that and they don't want a solution. They just want to vent. And that's okay. I want to vent too, but not usually about things that make any type of sense. I want to vent about Star Wars. I want to vent about why camels have that one random hump that has water. How did koalas even make it to the modern level? Like, how, koalas suck a lot of dick, right? Can we agree on that for a second? Koalas, I look at them and I go, they cry when other koalas punch them. How did they make it? Like, they had to... They live in like the worst environment on the planet, Australia, in terms of like the wildlife. It's like, it's, it's constantly, you would think there'd be like boxing matches between kangaroos and koalas, but there's not. I don't know. They live in solidarity. But the point I'm making is I love when you listen to my rants about things that have no no merit, no absolutely nothing at all. And I will listen to you rant about things that do matter and I won't come up with a solution, but I will be coming up with a solution in the back of my head. I don't even know what we're talking about right now, but yeah, it is 100% on to the person to control your health. No one else is going to do it for you, dude. Nobody else. I mean, you can probably look and seek out help in other places like go to the doctor or something like that. That's cool. But again, it's in your control. Like nobody else is going to like force you to go to the doctor. Nobody else is going to force you to eat better. Nobody's going to force you to do any of that stuff. You have to do it yourself.
It's ultimately up to you. And regardless of whether or not you think there's nothing you can do to change yourself, there is. There's something you can do. Even if you're like super disabled or you have like medical conditions and things like that, there are plenty of things you can do in your control right now that can help you be better, be healthier, and be more attractive, which I mean, let's be honest, you're already super attractive, but you can obviously be way more attractive. Those who subscribe to these beliefs view the pursuit of health, which is often conflated with thinness. It's usually when people say conflated with thinness, the, these people want to talk about people that are already thin. If you are already thin, it doesn't apply to you. So can we just stop? When you say often with thinness, if people that are already in thinner bodies, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply to them. Usually when people are talking about this, they're people that are bigger or, or obese, okay? Fat or obese people. So I don't know why these people have to specify this like conf often conflated with thinness. If you don't apply, you don't apply. You understand? Like you're the exception. It's okay. That's fine. We're talking about this group of people. You understand? I, I'm sick of having to specify this shit. If you are somebody that's obese, you're black, then yes, it's going to be very beneficial for you to lose weight across the board, across the board. There might be some very, very niche circumstances where maybe it's not, but again, you're the exception. If you know it doesn't apply, why are you even arguing it? It doesn't make sense. If you know that you're the anomaly, then fuck off me. It's not for you. Anyway. As a moral good, the problem with this is that healthism doesn't acknowledge that health is not entirely within a person's control. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be entirely within your control. That's like having, that's like going to the mechanic and having like a ton of problems with your car, but the biggest problem with your car is the engine and we need to fix it and you can fix it and it's relatively cheap and you could do that right now. Sure, you can have the other problems with your car. Maybe the door doesn't roll up correctly. Maybe the check engine light is on, the catalyst converter is hanging off the back, but at least if we fix the engine, we can get you going, we can get you moving, we can get these things started, right? So you don't need to totally fix everything, but it would be incredibly beneficial to work on the things that matter the most. And usually that's going to be getting in shape, losing weight, getting muscle, whatever, right? And you know, the crazy thing too, is when you get muscle, you can actually eat more because your body requires more fuel in order to power it. When you're fat, you still require more fuel to power it because you're fat as fuck. And it's like, it's the same thing as muscle, but the only difference is muscle is actually gonna benefit you because you're gonna become strong muscled up and you're going to become more of a delicacy within the world which can't say the same thing about being fat there's like almost nothing good about it so you can totally control the things that are meaningful if you can't control those things it's okay like i know that my nose is historically massive like look at the size and the, the girth the, the the sheer magnitude of my nose upon my face i know it's big but i can't do anything about it like it's just what it is my nose is big that's okay your nose is big my nose is big you got voluptuous nice kneecaps there's nothing you can do about it it is okay but the things that you can change like getting bigger biceps or becoming thinner or like shrinking yourself in some particular way even growing in a particular type of way these are things within your control you don't have to have just because you can't control something a hundred percent doesn't mean you can't control something a hundred percent within the abilities that you can right like you can't change the world, but you can change your world. It doesn't have to be 100%. It could just be 100% within what you can do. You understand? I'm sick of people thinking like this because nothing is going to be able to be changed 100%. And even if you could, it's probably not even a good idea to even do that. What do you want to like change your fucking bone structure? What are you talking about? That is such a bullshit ass argument. Of fucking course you can't change everything about your body. But you can change a lot of things, man. And I'm sick of people saying like, oh, but like, because you can't control everything, you shouldn't do it at all. That's dumb. That's dumb. That's like somebody saying, oh, because you don't make all the money, you just shouldn't make any money. That's fucking dumb, bro. That's stupid. You can make more money in the same way that you can get that gut, that big belly out of the way. There are also larger biological, social, cultural. It, it get, Listen, biological is such a fucking bullshit point. You as a big person, if you if you if you had, you know, if you had good parents in the sense of like your parents were big, broad shouldered fucking Scandinavian people. Right. And you had wide shoulders and you were tall. There's nothing you could do about that. You're just that's the way you are. Maybe you could fill up more. And it sucks sometimes when you look at somebody that's massive, like a big giant person. I'm not talking about that. And you see that they could eat so much food, dude. And you look at that and you go, you fucking bitch. You don't even know what it's like for me. I eat one onion ring and I gain 20 pounds. But this guy can eat cheesecakes no problem the point i'm making is there are things you cannot change i don't know why people are obsessing about this it's just like 
work within the boundaries that you have. I know it sucks that if you're like a five foot two girl and you can only eat 1300 calories, but you're looking at a guy that's like six foot two and he's over here literally like fucking swallowing deep throat and double ended fucking QPs in his mouth. It's just, it sucks. I get it. But like, forget about that for a second. Let's work on you. Let's talk about what you can do in, within the spectrum of things. 1300 calories, even though it may not be a lot in the spectrum of like humanity, it's a lot for you. And let's work on maximizing the amount of food we can get in your mouth within that calories. Let's get the nutrition in your mouth. You understand? That's what we want. We want a gangbang of nutrition in your fucking mouth. We want guys. We want Literally, 50, 60 guys lined up against a wall, and each one of them has their BBC Johnsons out, and you're going to run your face across every single one of them, but instead of having it be BBCs, it's nutritious foods, and you're running your face across all that good, delicious, well-lubricated, marinated goodness in your mouth, getting juiced up, becoming hydrated, becoming nutritioned all the way through. And guess what? You are what you eat. There's a reason why these people are constantly depressed, because they're eating terrible, disgusting, greased up sloppy food there are also larger biological social cultural and environmental issues that contribute to poor health we're living in the best time to ever be alive ever and these people still have something to complain about i and i get it there's you can always you can always be better it can be better i'm not saying you shouldn't complain but it just is so fucking upsetting to me how these people can become big to begin with, which has never been a thing. It's never been a thing ever in society. And you're sitting here going, oh, it's society, it's culture, it's it's the doctors, it's everything but me. It's never you, never can be you. It's never something you can change. It's always something else. It's never you. And this upsets me so deeply because there is not a single other time in history that I would want to live than right now. And guess what? The only reason why you are even big right now, the bigness of your body, is only possible because you're in the society that even allows it. It imbues this ability to have. You just took advantage of it. You understand? There are plenty of things that you could do nowadays. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. You understand? Like, I can do so much. I can go to the bank and I can take out a loan. I can buy a Tesla and I can suck guys off on the random on the street corner and I can walk with my butt cheeks out. I can do a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm not going to because I have thought processes and I have abilities to discern. My deductive abilities tell me that these things are not paramount and they're not things that I should probably do. You understand? In the same way that you being an adult, you don't have to sit there and body slam thousands of calories a day and then complain about the society and all these other things that are holding you back when ultimately you are the one that put yourself in these positions to begin with. How can you ever, how could you ever in your entire life never take accountability for anything? How'd you even get to this point in general? It's like, it's such an anomaly, bro. I never understood. It's like when I watch people that are like good members of society and then one day they do something crazy and like fucking kill someone. And I'm like, what the hell? You made it 34 years of your life just to make it to this point and then fucking go to jail and throw away your whole life? What happened there? It's like that, except it's probably worse because these people, well, it's not, maybe it's not worse because these people are alive and they're contributing to society and paying taxes, which is great. I enjoy it. Thank you for paying taxes. Hashtag fun social programs, not all of them. And that's awesome. But dude, I can't believe that you guys can complain to this degree, dude. I just, I've never seen a group complain this heavy. This is insane. You guys have nothing you can change for yourselves. Like you do realize you're an individual, right? Like you have free will. You understand you can stop eating such as genetics, <gasps> poverty, <gasps> violence, <gasps> trauma, environment, diet culture, and discrimination and oppression of all kinds. Can you go into a little bit more detail on all that? Because I would love to know where you're drawn from that. Because it's like very easy for somebody to just list out things and go, I'm oppressed because, and list out like nine different things and then not know why any of those things are things. You understand? Why is that the case? Why is it like diet? Diet culture, discrimination, what do you even mean by discrimination, by the way? Isn't discrimination and oppression kind of like synonymous in this particular scenario? But all right, whatever, dude. Culture, I don't know what you even mean by that. Is there some kind of like fat culture? Actually, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. Hashtag Americans do it better. Our large soda is like double what the European counterparts are. We do it better. What are you going to do about it, dude? We have Brad Pitt. What do you guys got? Henry Cavill. You got Henry Cavill. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm fucking wrong, dude. Damn, bro. You guys do have Henry Cavill, man. That is crazy. Mads McKelson. Ha. <laughs> You're right, dude. Oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. You're right. Benedict Cumberbatch, great actor. <laughs> wow, you guys really do have a lot of great actors. I'm lying. Damn, you got me on that one. But anyway, what do we do have? 
water parks. What are you going to do about that? We got water parks. We do better than anybody. I don't care that you have water parks in Dubai. That doesn't matter to me. That doesn't matter to me. That water park is one in the middle of the desert. We got like 80 in every state. Okay. Yes. They'll give you UTIs. That's part of the joy. You're going down the slide. There's a 50, 50 chance that the kid that went down before you, he peed on the slide. It is what it is. I'm sorry that your, your urethra is like one inch. I never have that problem. My urethra is like 10 inches default. So I'm never going to have that issue. But if you get a UTI from going to a water park, that's your own fault. I don't have to tell you. You're probably going to get, it might be cleaner in Dubai though. It might be slightly. Including ableism, racism, Damn. sexism. Damn, just name off everything. Just like, what are we even doing right now? It's like going into a fucking pizza shop and just like, yeah, throw everything. Don't even bother. It's like going into a pizza shop and going like, yeah, let me get a Big Mac uh, with cheese and let me get a Big Mac with cheese why are you even saying that just say i want a, two big macs with cheese why are you saying i want a big mac with cheese i want a big mac with cheese what is that why are you doing that that's that's uncalled for why are you just listing things out just go into the pizza shop and just just start this video and be like you know what the reason why fat people are all oppressed and we're fat is because everything that's the reason and just end the video there instead of having to go into oh, oppression sexism racism culturism societism every it's like what are you fucking it's just depressing just say everything just say it's none of your problems it's not your fault it's everybody else's fault and just leave it there <sighs> transphobia oh. homophobia oh. fat phobia damn. and weight stigma damn it's so much of the so many of the things that you listed are literally just synonymous terms you understand like they just, I don't know, man. Whatever, dude. Okay, it's not your fault. I get it. Whatever, man. <sighs> it just must be, it must be a great life, you know? To never have to take accountability for anything in your fucking life. It's so awesome, man. It's the only culture in the world where people can complain like this and people feel bad for them. I don't feel bad for you. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You're fucking, you're, you're, you're a grown woman. I don't care that you feel like you're being oppressed by everything. Um, is it's, I'm gonna let you know right now, it's better on my side where I don't even really think about any of that stuff. I never go outside and like cross the street and a guy honks at me and I go, this is fucking structural racism right now. I can't believe this guy honked at me. You know what? I'm like, I'm wearing shoes right now and I'm wearing mismatched socks. This is colorism. This is fucking colorism right now. Let me call the cops right now and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking tell this guy he's wrong and it's gonna be awful. But I also don't, I don't support the police, obviously. So I'm not even, I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna call them assholes. And I'm gonna say that they're racist and fat phobic because they picked up the phone too fast. And that is too fast for fat people to pick up the phone because their hands are literally way too big to be picking up the phone to that degree so i know they're ableist because they're picking up the phone too fast you understand like these particular logic points are just like i don't even know how you get there but this is the way they think about it you're fat fat fatty yeah <laughs> doesn't bother me keep eating fatty oh, shit. one of my more self-destructive behaviors on this app is any video that's making this joke which i love personally oh my God. i love to scroll through the comments and that piercing looks like it's a little bit it looks like it's about to fly out am i wrong kind of like you know when you have a button you ever see like a guy or like a woman with a big like women do this right i've seen this more times than i've seen on fat guys obviously i'm not watching fat guys implode but you know when women like button up their shirt or whatever and they're trying to be hot and they go like oh and then they pop the button you know and it's like oh my god her boobs her cleavage are so massive or whatever you don't really see it in practice nobody's i've never seen i've never seen that in real life like i've never seen a woman pop a button from having too much cleavage but i have seen that in pornography right i'm a i'm an avid porn watch i've watched a lot of porn i've been watching porn since i was like 12. i don't claim it's a good thing but I feel like it's like that on her nose piercing. I feel like your nose piercing is like on the brink of just Is any video that's making this joke, which I love personally, I, love. I love to scroll through the comments and look for all of the thin people crying about how I get- It's a weird life you live where you're just, am I wrong in saying that her nose piercing looks like it's about to Am I wrong? Look at it, dude. Look, look at the thing. I don't know where these people, like, what do you do in your day where you're just scrolling through comment section going like, let me see if I can start a problem. Like, <laughs> let me see what people are saying so I can get into the nitty gritty, getting down in the dirt and fight with these people and make a video commenting how terrible, disgusting they are, even though none of my points make sense. That's what I'm hearing from this person. I just can't have body image issues then, can I? Body dysmorphia is a thing. First of all, nobody is telling you that. Don't lie to me. Second of all, let's remove the body size aspect of this conversation. You and I are talking and I'm like, oh God, if I looked like you, I would feel so gross. Nobody's doing that. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. Oh my God. You couldn't even backhand that shit. That's crazy. They just hit somebody with a damn. You look damn. That's crazy. What happened to you? You're big. 
That's crazy. Nobody's saying that, though. Like, that's such an unreasonable statement. Nobody's doing that. Nobody. Even if you met somebody out in public and they didn't care about you, nobody's doing that. That I would rather... This is That is so ungodly levels of disrespectful. I would rather have a homeless person. Literally, I'm sitting down, like, on a park bench. I want him to literally mouthwash me. I want him to use his penis as a toothbrush with Colgate. And I would find that more appropriate than whatever the fuck that statement was. That's how unreasonable that is. Now you're talking and I'm like, oh God, if I looked like you, I would feel so gross. Oh, my worst fear is to look like you. Yeah. Gross. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel gross thinking about it. Bitch, you would stay my friend after that? Yeah, but it's not happening. That's not, nobody's doing that. Nobody's doing that at all. That's never a thing. Usually if it's like, it's like backhanded compliments. Like when you talk to your friends and you go, hey man, do I look okay today? And they go, you don't look that ugly. It's like one of those, like people are giving you backhanded compliments. They're not giving you straight out like, Damn, no, what the fuck? You look bad, dude. You look like a fucking Sasquatch that's been dipped in chocolate. That's not happening. Nobody's doing that. Nobody, nobody. I don't care what kind of friends you have. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's that creative. Nobody's going to tell you that you look busky and watermelon juiced. Nobody's telling you that. Ah! Nobody's gatekeeping body image issues. You guys are pretty much gatekeeping the body image issues. You hate it when anybody else, with the exception of fat people, have issues with society when it comes to body image issues. You guys literally compare it all the time. You go like... Okay, yeah, you guys might be having issues, but like, bro, our issues are way worse. And I'll give you a good example of how I know this is true. You guys literally have scales, sliding scales, based off the amount of oppression you presume somebody would have. Mid-sized fat, big fat, super fat, infinifat, crazy by the way, infinifat. I can't even believe you guys thought of that one. That one's actually incredibly disrespectful. But you have these scales, and obviously... You suspect that people on the lower end of those scales are being treated better in society based off of, I don't know, whatever the fuck you guys, like society and, and then, you know, genetics or whatever the fuck the other person said. So you, you genuinely believe this. You do. So if somebody's thinner, you're going to not disqualify them maybe, but you're definitely going to preference that with, but I face more issues than you, or this other person's faces more issues than you. Well, thanks bro. I think I'm just going to like go to my fucking kitchen and just drown myself in iced tea now because I, nobody fucking cares about me. So dismissive but please stop unveiling your fat phobia to your fat friends at least i'm gonna do what the fuck i want bro if i'm talking to my friends and i'm gonna go yo bro i got this big gut oh man my gut is so big and my friends hit me with the yeah bro you're big as fuck i'm not gonna be upset because guess what i mean i am fat and i think it might be pretty okay for a friend to actually outline the fact that you are big sometimes you know uh because guess what sometimes you don't know sometimes you don't know sometimes you have friends and you don't know some things because you live in your body. Like for instance, I'll give you a scenario. I remember one day I smelled bad, okay? I forgot deodorant, I did, and I was out with my friend and he said, David, and I said, yep. He said, you, you don't smell good. And I said, really? He said, you smell really bad. You smell like a jock strap that's been dipped in like Steve Buscemi's earlobes. And I was thinking, that's, okay, that's pretty fucking extreme. You know, that's, okay, bro. You know, that's pretty fucking extreme. And you know what we did? We stopped at a Target, and I got some Old Spice deodorant. And then I put deodorant on, and guess what happened? I didn't smell as bad. So, there you go. I solved my issue because my friend said something that was disrespectful to me. But because he was my friend, and I know he's coming from a place of, I love this guy. Maybe not like that. Not the way you think about it. I was able to adjust myself and become more flavorful as an individual, and I still have the deodorant stick to this day. Yeah, uh, it's been used up, obviously, but I like to keep momentums, okay? And I like to hold on to things as moments in time. I go, yes, this is the time I got that deodorant because my friend said I smelt bad, and now I can look back at that and go, what a great friend. <laughs> what a great guy that helped me that one day get better smell. When you get to that point, then you get to sit with the fact that your body image issues do not remove the privileges that come. See, see that's what I'm talking about. See, you literally, I knew it, bro. And here's, I did not watch this video. I promise, I promise, all genuine. This, I swear I did not set this up, bro. It's just so happens these people are literally playbooks. Like, it's, I'm like reading the script and I can already tell where it's going to go. It's like any romantic comedy from like 2004. I know what's going to happen, okay? It's so crazy how you can say like, no, you guys do have body image issues. It's completely fine to have body image issues. But... Hey, you guys don't really face that much problems. Like, let's be honest, like, fat people way more problems. You guys really, you have so much privilege. Like, I don't even know why you're complaining about that. Wow. Wow. What a way, what a way to really help me. Oh my God, you really helped me out there. You really somehow managed to, to validate my body image issues whilst in the same breath 
telling me that it, they don't really mean anything because I have thin privilege. Oh, man. Wow. That's great. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. With existing in a thin body. Join me on a thought process I've had recently. When we make intentional weight loss the primary goal of bringing health promoting behaviors into our life, oftentimes that goal becomes a barrier to those very same behaviors. And this is not me saying that you shouldn't want to lose weight or whatever. I don't care what you do with your own body. Now why are you even prefacing it with that? Are you are you genuinely under the assumption that if somebody tried to lose weight, it, it they would it would not be healthy for them to do that what do you mean like the bear there would be more barriers in place for health if i am overweight which obviously i'm not look at me i'm juiced up right now if you looked at me and i was big bellied and i said i want to lose some weight i want to lose some weight and you hit me with but if you lose weight you'll actually not become healthy you'll just lose weight but i'm already unhealthy right now what the fuck i can't, can't couldn't it just be improved like i'm literally 350 right now look at my gut that's just touching my kneecaps and then you hit me with the yeah but you know there's gonna be issues there's gonna be problems it's just so you probably shouldn't even try probably shouldn't even try bad information dude bad and the calories in calories out people you need to leave you need to you leave. probably have chem 2 homework that you should be doing leave chem 2 homework i'm sorry that i know simple fucking math what do you mean, Chem 2? What are you trying to make it seem like? Oh, it's like a rocket science shit to know that some... That, I'm not even going to explain. That's dumb. That's stupid. That's stupid. Me alone. Way more complicated than that. It's not. It's not, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's more complicated in the sense of if you want to make it more complicated. If you just want to eat less than what you need a day, there you go. That's great. That's what you want to do. That's fine. But if you want to say, for instance, eat what you need in a day and maybe a little bit more and then go to the gym and burn that excess, then it could be a little bit more complicated. But it's really not actually more complicated. It's just simple math. You understand? Like you're not... It's not even like you're going into decimals at this rate. You're just literally taking regular calorie counts and then you're just taking off a little bit. That's all you're doing. I don't know why you would think it's something so... St what I'm actually saying is when I hear someone say they want to get healthy, lose weight, they start exercising more, eating more nutritiously, yeah. prioritizing sleep, drinking oh. their water, blah, blah, blah. That sounds so... What do you mean blah, blah, blah? That's good. Oh, man, that shit kind of... That shit got me a little bit spicy right now. I can't believe I might have to stand up for a second. I might need to drink some water or something, dude. All those words you just said were so luxurious to my body. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm my, I'm vibrating right now. I'm, I'm hot. My face is hot. You know, I don't know. Like for some reason, I feel like the blood from my head just kind of evacuated and went to a different spot after you said all those great words that people can be doing right now to improve their health. And they don't see the weight loss goal that they had set up for themselves, so they stop doing all of those behaviors. Now the goal has become a barrier to all of those health-promoting behaviors. If you're losing weight and you're doing all those things and you're getting progress, why wouldn't you continue to do those things? I don't understand. If somebody's like, sometimes when you start losing weight or doing anything in life, you might go really hard too quickly. You know, like you might jump into the deep end very, very quickly. And then you realize this isn't for me. And then you back up a little bit, which I never recommend. That's usually what I find when people start losing their weight. They think I'm going to go eight days a week in the gym and I'm going to eat 200 calories a day and I'm going to drink water, but I'm only going to do it off the, I'm going to drink it off of the phallus of a, of a BBC. Like you're going too hard. You're going too hard. You're going too fast slow and steady it's okay take your time you don't need to jump all the way in eventually you'll find out how to swim and you'll be able to get into that deep end take your time it's not that it's not that it's not that hard the goal can just be doing those behaviors yeah but like what about like the goal could be just doing those behaviors but usually people want to see some progress you know people want to see that what they're doing is going to pay off that'd be like somebody going you could just pay money to somebody and not get anything in return yeah, I could do that. Huh, I, n I never thought about that. I never thought that I could just give people money and get nothing in return. Hmm, wow. <laughs> You're right. I could just do that. Dumb, dumb. You may or may not see weight loss as a result, but science supports your health outcomes will improve regardless of what the scale does. Then you got to ask yourself, did I want to get healthy or did I just want to get small? Both. Hello. Hi, can I get a seatbelt extender, please? A what? Can I get a seatbelt extender, oh, yeah. please? Thank you so much. Is this yours? There's this mine. That's mine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Getting a seatbelt extender is so easy. It takes 10 seconds. It like, isn't a fuss at all. Also, just pro tip for me. I get really anxious, like, coming on to play because, like, you know, I don't want to bump into anyone or, you know. Call if you're, like, anxious or you think that the weight is an issue in some way and 
why don't you just lose weight? Like, it's just, I don't know. So many times I see, like, these people are going through problems. And don't get me wrong, I understand that it's fine to have problems. Like, everybody's going to have issues with some things. Sometimes you don't want to do things that you have to do. And that sucks. But ultimately, it makes you a better person for it. But I don't think that it's, like, a good idea. I always say this. Trauma is good in the spectrum of, like, it's good to be able to have that trauma happen to you and bounce back. I don't think having trauma for trauma's sake is a good thing. I think that's fucking terrible. So when you are a person that's literally imbuing yourself, like you're fucking enchanting a sword, you're enchanting your body with debuffs all fucking day long because you're fat, and you could at any point go to the fucking smith and alleviate all the debuffs on that sword of your body and live a better life and not have to deal with any of those problems, why the fuck... Why the fuck wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you lose weight and not have to ask for a seatbelt extender? Why wouldn't you lose weight and not have to deal with the negative effects of like diabetes, high blood pressure, all this other stuff, and then like be healthier as an outcome of that? And you'll be more luxurious as a human being. I don't understand, dude. I don't get it. It's like these people are setting themselves up for their own failure. And then they complain about it. They complain about it. Oh my God, I'm anxious. I don't know why I have to ask for a seatbelt extender. They should just give it to me. Dude, you're big. You're kind of big. I was seen. So I always ask if I can board early. So like man i'm on my flight already she's on the fucking plane before the 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 the, the marines and shit dude what privilege just sitting down just waiting i always try and sit in like the outside because there is a button that lets you like lift on at least most flights can you imagine having to sit down in a seat like that because otherwise there's like the the ability to put up the armrest is just not feasible for you for the inside seat why don't you just lose weight? It's just, I don't know why these people so do this So I try and sit and like I lift that so I'm not like squishing onto anyone. People started coming on. So, so no conclusion, but if you're fat, do what you can to make yourself more comfortable while flying. You know, that's that, you know what? That's great. That is true. This is true. Yep. Do what you can to make yourself more comfortable when flying. Lose weight. That should be right there. Oh my God. I just solved the problem. I just did. That should be what this this whole message is not you know buy neck don't you know buy seatbelt extenders buy extra extenders for your seat belt you know buy bigger toilet seats why are you advocate what are you doing why are you trying to make your life easier while fat when you could just not be fat and have regular stuff what is wrong with you my three core beliefs about the work that i'm doing here number one fat people deserve to be treated with dignity says who dude what are you talking about by what spectrum like but why, why who personally are you speaking about like obviously by establishments depending on the establishment if you're a private business you can act you can treat people however you want to it's probably better to treat people with respect because you want them to spend money but maybe the government sure the government should treat you well sure but like individual people on the street nah i don't know you dude i'll die if i want to call you a, a butter biscuit boy i'm gonna call you that you can't say nothing about it dude. what are you gonna do huh what you gonna do if you believe that fat people are lazy, greedy, unhealthy, unattractive, whatever it is, and the fact that it's really easy to lose weight because your uncle's girlfriend's dog lost weight in 1992, that still doesn't change the fact that fat people deserve to have evidence-based care and deserve... If you just listed all, all those great things, like people that you can, being fat, you can lose weight. You can become healthier. You can do all this stuff. That doesn't change that these people should still be treated. That's fine. I mean, it's great. But how could you list all those things and like not do it, not do it, not do it at all? Like none of that, none of it, none of it, none of it. Okay, none of it. All right, go ahead. Go off, dude. I, I, these glasses are better than the last ones. I'm not going to lie to you. But I don't, I don't like this like, um, this, this, this outfit she's wearing. You ever see Terminator 3? And it's not the best one. It's not. Terminator 2, obviously, is the best one. And that's because it had Th George Thoroughbred. Jo George Thoroughbred, or whatever his name was. Ba -do -do -ba -ba boom, ba -do -do -do. That, that song. And I love Arnold. Arnold is top G. Arnold is the real top G, dude. Hashtag, uh, America. He's American. It's just what it is. He's the definitive American. Uh, and there was a girl, like the girl Terminator in the movie. She had this, like, really, it was 2004 or five, dude. I don't know. These Spice Girls were big or something like that. Whatever, dude. Leather clothes were hot. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, this girl, Halle Berry from Catwoman, right? Do I need to say anything more than that? Really uncomfortable. I don't know. Like, wouldn't that be really uncomfortable to wear leather on your skin? Leather on skin? That's fucking not comforting to me. But anyway, 
Um, she was wearing like a really red leather suit for the entire movie, and it was so uncomfortable to look at. It was so bad. I do, you know, it's like when you watch superheroes and you look at their outfits and you're like, that doesn't look practical at all, right? Like I look at Wonder Woman and I'm like, damn, dude, like huh, a man had to have made this. This woman is skimpy as fuck. I can see ass cheeks, you know. And I love Gal Gadot or Gal Gadot, wherever you pronounce her name. She's a very fine looking woman, right? Same thing with Henry Cavill or even Batman. I'm looking at a lot of body parts right now dude it's kind of it kind of making me a little bit you know uh, i don't know i feel like i shouldn't be getting these feelings right now watching this movie human respect number two we all have anti-fat beliefs yes. even me and working to unlearn them benefits all people of then i'm just i'm just lost then like if you're gonna tell me that everybody has anti-fat biases including people that are literally trying to unlearn it and sometimes these people will literally be like i've been trying to unlearn my anti-fat diet my anti-fat bias for literally 20 years dude what the fuck hope do i got like if you're literally the advocate for this shit and you still have anti-fat beliefs what the fuck am I? I might as well just give up. I might as well just say, fuck it. You win. I lose. I'm just going to accept the fact that I'm fat phobic. I don't know what to say. I personally, I don't know what to say, dude. You got it. You win. But if you're sitting here trying to unlearn these beliefs, maybe, and it's taking you this fucking long, maybe it's just not something you should unlearn. I don't fucking know, dude. It kind of seems like it might be useful to have this beliefs of like, if you're fat, you might be able to not outrun a mountain lion or like a gazelle or something like that or whatever's trying to eat you at that moment. Body sizes. Number three, shaming and blaming people doesn't feel good to me. I, but like, here's the thing, bro. All right, I'm gonna keep it a solid bug with you. I know it might sound a little bit crazy to say this, but shaming people, I know doesn't feel good. Well, it could feel good depending on the situation. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we all want to be called that bad boy or that bad girl, whatever you want, right? Sometimes it might, it might, there are certain scenarios, right? But I know what she's talking about. So I'm not going to like go off on this like little tangent of like maybe in one scenario where somebody is spreading Nutella across your chest, calling you a bad boy, that might be good in your mouth. But in these scenarios, yes, it probably doesn't feel good to have somebody in your life go, you're fat, you oh, you're big. Oh, you're real big. Oh my God. What is that? What is that under, under your belly? Is that a chicken? What do you have there? Huh? You got some Salisbury steak? What is that? Why do you have that under your armpit? It might, it's not going to feel good. Not going to feel good. But sometimes you need to have the not feel good in order to feel good later on. Because not everything's going to feel good in your life. And you understand? Like there's going to be tough moments. And wouldn't it be better to hear the not so good information from somebody that cares about you? Somebody that's going to care and say things to you even though they may not be the best thing to say for to you at that moment? But they're going to say it to you anyway because they know that the end result of that is going to be better for you in the long term. To me, that sounds great. And it might not be okay in every scenario, but I wouldn't just say in general that shaming people is always going to be bad. It might be in the sense of like bad now, but the later on outcome of that is probably going to be a lot better me so i try to avoid that terrible terrible advice terrible 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 because then you're never gonna have conversations that really fucking matter you're never gonna say anything to anybody that has any type of fucking value because you're afraid that you might hurt somebody's fucking feelings it doesn't i don't care i don't care I, like if i'm dating you and you sucked off jacob down the fucking street am i gonna make you feel bad by saying i don't want to be your boyfriend anymore because you suck jacob down <gasps> what i'm gonna tell you i don't like that I don't like that you sucked a guy off that wasn't me. That's kind of not the best, not the best. I wouldn't suck off guys without your permission. And obviously I consider that to be cheating. So I don't like it. Should I just not tell you those things? Should I just not tell you that I feel a particular type of way? Is that shaming you because I think that you did something that was wrong, huh? You see how stupid that sounds? Do you see how fucking dumb that is, dude? Okay, yeah, no, don't shame. Don't say anything because you're gonna hurt somebody's feeling at some point. By the way, anything you say can be interpreted as shaming to somebody so you know what shut your fucking mouth you can't say anything i'm sorry i'm sorry you can't say shit it is what it is you're gonna shame somebody at some point you're a bad fucking person you know what you just existing is already shaming somebody oh my god what is wrong with you can't you believe you are a fucking terrible person so fucking terrible and disgusting in a good way oh you look good you look so good today wow that backpack is nice you look good you look real tasty today 
And instead, I want to lead with joy, compassion, and laughter. It's terrible advice because, like, on its surface, like, unless you're talking to, like, 10-year-olds or, like, younger, like, 7-year-olds maybe, saying this is cool because, you know, you want them to be motivated and you want them to be cool with stuff and things like that. But being an adult, dude, I, like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, if you're sitting here and my arm is, like, bleeding off and you go, like, but I just want to lead with, like, kindness, compassion, and laughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know your arm is bleeding, but like, isn't it great? This gr environment is so great and it's so awesome. I'm just going to be sitting there with my arm hanging off going like, so like, is somebody going to tell me if this is bad? Can I get some guys? Can somebody help me out with this? No, no, can't do it because guess what? That would be infringing upon love, happiness, and compassion. That's what that is. Stop it. Don't don't try to help people. It's not good for you. I mean, after all, I am fat, so that yeah. means that I'm going to be dead in a matter of years, months. I hear this a lot. I heard this, like, the other day when I was watching this fat creator, and he was like, you know, like, all these fucking people were telling me that I'm going to die at 25. Well, guess what, bitches? I'm 25. <gasps> that, that, that was, like, really accurate, like, gasping for air after saying one sentence like he was stevie from malcolm in the middle except not black not in a wheelchair and he was also white so like i guess not like stevie in the malcolm in the middle but kind of like the same you know in terms of like the breath control but it's just an oddity when these people say that because it's like i don't think that you're gonna die like i mean obviously i do obviously everybody's gonna fucking die but you're gonna expedite the lifespan i don't think you're gonna die at like 25 at least i hope you don't but i'm saying like it's gonna be hard for you to get to these extended life periods without any type of illnesses, traumas, or anything else related to those things. It's obvious. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Weeks. So I might as well laugh about it. Sure. One way to think about I'm it. I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I help compassionate people earn an anti fat bias. Compassionate people? Like, but what if I'm not a compassionate person? What you not you can't teach me? I'm just like exempt from that shit, dude. Fuck, man. I can live without shame and be a fat. Animal. Sometimes you need shame. I don't know why this is. All right, bro. I mean, I just already went through it. There's no point of me rehashing it. Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet as fierce fatty. Oh, you know why you can find her everywhere on the internet. <laughs> Remember, you're worthy. You yes. always were. Yes. You always will be. Period. Stay fierce fatty. Oh yes, right. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm so worthy. I don't know what I'm worthy of, but I feel like I can live me on there. Oh, so. Okay, so this comment is a great example. Comment responding to a video about size inclusive at work. If they aren't physically capable of the job, why would they give them the role? I could not have said it better myself, dude. Oh, this is the question. This is the fucking question. I am very interested in hearing what this person has to say and how they're going to deny this claim. Paul of bias. And there's two things that I notice with this comment. The first thing is that there's the belief that fat people aren't capable. What do you mean the belief? Are we not like centering ideas and facts right now? Are we just like going off on the whims that fat people are capable of doing everything that thin people are capable of doing? <sighs> okay. I mean, if that's, uh, I don't know how you got there. I don't know. I'm interested in how you're going to explain that. But okay. And the second thing is that disabled people shouldn't be given jobs. You wow. You're just, it's just so interesting how you managed to pull that from nothing. Where did you get that from? Where did you, where did you get that, huh? How did you get there? What map did you take? How did you navigate that so terribly? Where did you see that? Where are you seeing that exactly, huh? Physically capable, why would they receive the job? I don't see where this guy is saying they shouldn't receive any jobs. Nobody's saying that. Nobody is saying that. What they're saying is that if you're not going to hire a guy with no legs to be an athlete at running. That why would you do you think that we should you, you you would do that huh like you think that we should hire guys without legs like no legs at all do you think that they should just be professional runners right like they would just be at the finish line crawling that's what you want okay that's what we want that's what we're doing guys inclusivity hashtag inclusivity that's gonna work dumb it's a dumb statement i don't know how you got there it's fucking stupid dude i can't believe this you have to come up with your own pro like how could you read this comment and go i'm gonna really just not even answer this question i'm gonna come up with my own problems and i'm gonna answer those problems to make it seem like my points are really valid even though i'm not gonna address any of that shit oh my god yes oh so great please please keep going and the second thing is that disabled people shouldn't be given jobs beautiful so the question to consider is the one that's asked, the one that's asked, not anyone else. I don't know why you would even go off on this, like a tangent of things that are not relevant to the situation, but go off. How will this person's bias 
cause harm? That's not the question. I don't know. Where's that? Where'd you get that? Where, where, so somebody posed you a question and it's right here on the screen and you just, you somehow you got that? How is this person bias going to cause harm? Where is that? I don't see it. I'm not seeing that. Uh, where is that? I don't see it at all. I don't see that at all. Where is that question? Are you looking at something that I'm not? Please tell me because I don't have the context here. I don't get it. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Sheesh, man. Well, one, if they're someone who hires people, then they're going to be actively perpetuating anti-fat bias by preferring smaller bodied candidates. And two, <laughs> fucking, yeah, if I need somebody doing a particular role and the person that applies for the position doesn't reach those. Are, listen, are you going to be upset? I'm going to keep it a buck. If somebody was like going to work at fucking NASA or like they're in those guys that are like colliding black holes fucking together and you need like a really, really high education level to be eligible to even be in these positions, right? Let's say you need to go to school for like a long period of time. Like, oh, that's a, a great example. A doctor, <laughs> right? Something that we don't want to talk about, obviously, in the fat community, but doctors need a lot of work in order to become doctors, right? You're not just, you're not just going to eat another doctor and become a doctor. You understand you have to put in work in order to get to that point. So you are now a doctor. Are you going to hire just some random guy off the street because he gave you the job application? Or are you going to discriminate against this guy? Because guess what? He does no expertise, never been to school, and he's gay. Out of the gay part is not relevant, but you understand what I'm talking about. This is, this is obviously you're going to discriminate. He doesn't meet the recommendation. He doesn't meet the constraints. He's not eligible. In the same way that you don't want to hire somebody that is legless, that's going to be a, doing a job like running. It doesn't make sense, obviously. So why are you even doing this? Like, why would you even, why would you even, like, this is such a fucking crazy hill to die on. You really can't think about any other reason why somebody wouldn't want to hire some. Please, I need to have a, I need to have a conversation with you. I need to talk to you because this level of cognitive dissonance is so incredibly out of the realm of ordinarily. Usually people have cognitive, cognitive dissonance about like, man, I really, really, really love kissing girls on the lips. I love it tasting the sweet delicacies of women mouth, but oh, BBC in my throat tastes so good. I love it. It's so, uh, uh, just swallowing it. Uh, ethereally, you know what I'm talking about? You're just you're just taking BBC in your mouth imaginarily. Like, you know when you play air guitar, you're sucking air BBC. That's what you're doing. There's going to be some cognitive distance there because you love kissing women, but obviously you love sucking BBC. There's something going on there. This level of cognitive dissonance is so incredibly out of the realm of reality. You're literally claiming that fat people or people without legs can run. Oh, real? Oh. oh. Okay, yeah, all right, cool, 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 puts in their application do you think that i'm also gonna hire them like do you think that oh they're older so it's more valid no they're they're not getting hired either no they're not you know that yeah i, I don't know what to tell you i don't even know why you're bringing up this point these arguments are <laughs> i fucking what are you doing <laughs> how'd you even get here how'd you even get here dude what is this argument right now it's not even the real question i don't even know why you why you even have this question on the screen why is this even here you're not answering it you're just fucking Come on, man. Come on, dude. If we're not already disabled. So this person is either disabled or pre-disabled. 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 What the fuck are you talking about? So you're saying like, <laughs> it's fucking, that's like somebody going like, oh yeah, I got drafted for the military. They told me I was an able-bodied human, but I told them that I'm like pre-ordering the, I'm pre-ordering the DLC for being disabled so you can't hire me. What the fuck are you talking about? What? What are you talking about? What are you saying? What? So you're just like, nah, I don't need to work because I'm gonna be disabled at one point in my life? What the fuck? What are you talking about? How'd you get, what? <laughs> okay, all right, I'm dumb. I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> what? Okay, uh, damn, damn. That's really how we're doing now, huh? Damn. That's... 
That's dumb. That's dumb. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is shit. That shit is that is mind blowing. You're pre disabled. I've never heard somebody say that shit before in my life. What the fuck? What? Oh, oh man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. That shit is crazy. That is a crazy. So this statement. person is either disabled or pre disabled. And my guess is that their biased beliefs are going to harm the way that they view their own body. And I think that's kind of sad. If they unlearned their bias, it would be helpful not only for themselves, but for everyone else. Anti-fatness and uh, ableism affects everyone. You said nothing. You said nothing. You didn't even answer his question. Somebody asked you a question, and you chose to not even answer his question. He didn't even answer your question, and you said some bullshit like pre-ordering disability. Oh, damn, that is tough. That's tough, man. That is craziness. That's how'd you get here? You rent apartments? How'd you get? How you got a driver's license? How'd you do that? How'd you do that? Cause you know that you. I don't think you should get a driver's license because one day you might not be able to drive. You see that? You see how that makes sense? No, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all, huh? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Nope. 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 Sorry. I don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> That's fucking... Wow. I gotta watch more of this woman, dude. This woman right here is an anomaly. <sighs> Shit. Oh my god, dude. I really feel like I maybe have lost 30% of my brain cells. Hopefully, I can do something later today. That will like recoup those brain cells or something like that, dude. Because that shit is serious. Oh my god. That is craziness. The words that were just expelled from this woman's mouth. I can't believe it. I literally have no idea how she managed to say those words without anything in her brain going, Whoa! Whoa! Hold up, you're you about to say some crazy dumb shit right now. Don't say that. Don't say that. You're going to literally embarrass yourself in front of like thousands of people. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. But she still did it. You still did it. Wow. It takes a level of confidence to do that. And I, I want to give you I want to give you a little clap. That's great. I'm glad that you were able to say that confidently enough to not give a fuck about anything. That's crazy, you know? To me, I wouldn't. I could not. I couldn't do that shit. No, couldn't do that. But you, huh, obviously, something different about you. Not in a good way, maybe. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, obviously you enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. Don't act like you didn't. I know you did. I know you enjoyed it. You loved it. You fucking loved it. And I know you love it. Don't lie. Don't fucking lie to me. You loved it. All in your mouth. In your mouth and your lower back. That's what it's all about. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, notifications. Discord server is up. If you want to be a member of my channel, you can. You can totally do that. If you don't want to, though, it's completely fine. Discord server, like I said, if you want to join, we talk about things that are maybe not even relevant to anything. But if you want to do that, you can join up, and I'm there, and we talk, and we do things. Community. That's what it's all about. Building communities, individual people coming together, talking about sugar and hoodies. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. If you watch this video in its entirety, <laughs> I hope you did, because I think, I think this was a good one. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, Leave it down below by typing in grass because I really feel like these people especially need to touch grass. They are living so far out of the realm of reality. I don't even know what universe they're in right now. Their universe is like, I don't even know. Can't, can't exchange words. There's no words that could possibly even be. I feel like if I tried to explain it, I would probably lose more brain cells. So I'm just not going to. Anyway, you're a beautiful specimen of human being. Everything I talked about in this video in a positive direction is probably oriented towards you. When I think of somebody that I think is like really beautiful, exp extra extraordinarily, expensively, amazingly organic of a person, I always think about you. I do. And I think that your motivation from you, uh, for, for me, for everybody looking upon you, sees the deliciousness that you emanate off your body on a daily basis. And I think this person really gets me feeling ways that I can't possibly even comprehend. I just want to lick your eyebrows on a daily basis, but consensually, of course, consensually, I need your permission to lick your eyebrows, but I know you're going to give me permission to lick your eyebrows because obviously your eyebrows are so incredibly lickable that it's not anomalous to say that I am attracted to your eyebrows. It's pretty obvious. Obviously, I've been literally salivating this entire video while gazing upon your eyebrows, and I know you know that I love them. I know you know it. It's my addiction. I have to tell you, it's my addiction. I can't stop myself. I'm addicted to it, and I, I'm not afraid to admit it anymore. I'm going to come clean. I'm coming out.
Your eyebrows are too good to not be licked. I need them right now in my mouth. Sometimes I think about, I dream about them. When I'm in the shower, you don't even want to know what I do in the shower. When I think about your eyebrows, you don't want to know. It's, I can't, I can't tell you. It's not, it's not, I can't tell you. Maybe, maybe one day, maybe one day. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check my social media, it'll be linked down below. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Discord. Like I said, if you want to join any of those, you can go ahead and do that. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.